Hey, this is Matty Trump at MixandMasterMySong.com. Today I want to go over a video on some of the reasons why I've switched from Pro Tools to Studio One 3. Now, I've been a Pro Tools user for like 15 years, and it's how I got my first gigs when I first started um, interning at studios. Um, all the old timers were just using analog tape and stuff, and so I learned how to use Pro Tools, and that's how I got my first gig was running Pro Tools sessions. But over like the last three or four years, I found that like a lot of the other programs were having cool new features that Pro Tools didn't have. And, um, you know, I was kind of felt like Pro Tools was kind of going behind and not staying ahead of the curve with everything. So, you know, my buddy uh, said, um, you should check out Studio One. It's a lot like Pro Tools, but with all the new features you might want and check it out. And, I tried to do it with Logic, which I use a lot for making beats and producing, but I could never really got into using Logic for mixing. It just doesn't flow right for me personally. Um, so basically today I just kind of wanted to go over uh, some of the things in Pro Studio One that I use and how I use them, and hopefully it will help you if you're thinking about switching from Pro Tools to Studio One, or if you're looking for a new DAW, um, you know, it might just help you with some cool tricks that uh, you can learn. So. Check it out. So the first thing that was very helpful for me for uh, was the keyboard shortcuts, because like I said, I've been using Pro Tools for a long, long time, and they have the keyboard mapping so that it can do all the same things the Pro Tools does. So it made it really easy for me to transition in here because they were mapped the same way, to scroll in, scroll out, um, all my edit features were the same, and then it says modified here because I switched some. Um, just, you know, because features are a little different in different DAWs. But uh, all you got to do is just click on Pro Tools and you will have all the key commands the same way when you first start using Studio One. So that made it easy and all the um, editing features are the same. You can delete and, you know, scroll in, scroll out, trim. Um, it's got great fades on it and stuff, makes it really easy to do fades. So all the basic editing stuff is the same. Uh, the, one of the big game changers for me was uh, Melodyne. I do a lot of vocal tuning, um, doing a lot of R&B and pop stuff. And Melodyne's a big part of that. And the problem I was having, every time I want to use Melodyne, you have to record it real time in Pro Tools. And then, um, you know, you can't edit the track. So say I have a breath here. I couldn't take that out in Pro Tools. You would still hear it because Melodyne kind of takes over the audio. And, you know, and then so the only way to solve that was to convert the file to another audio file. But if the client wanted to change Melodyne, it was so it was just always a huge disaster. And so what changed the game for me was in here, you just click the track, go to audio and go edit with Melodyne and it loads it all up for you and you're on your way to tuning vocals right away. I mean, it's like the easiest stuff in the world. And click OK and then you're done. And then you can still go in and edit this and change things. Um, and, and it's the same thing. And then if you need to go back to the melody and change the note, it's easy, you just go in. So it's, it's the best thing in the world. I, I couldn't believe that you could do that with a program um, and so right away I was like, this is a great program. The only problem I have with this program was that they didn't have Vocaline. Well, like two weeks later, they came out with Vocaline. And so now with Vocaline, it, to me, it's even better than when you used it in Pro Tools. Um, if you don't know, Vocaline is something you use to line up two tracks that are the same. So for instance, these, uh, this song that I can't play because it's getting mixed right now um, and the client doesn't want it played, but um, this song, for instance, has two double tax tracks right here, and all you got to do to line them up together is click both, so they're both highlighted, go up to audio, and click edit with vocal line, and right away vocal line comes out, and then you just drag your guide here, and then your dub here, and it processes it, and it's ready. It, and that's the same thing where Pro Tools, it's a destructive thing. I got to actually process this audio file. This is done. I can move on and go away. And then if I need to come back and say I want these a little more processed, you can switch, switch the flexibility on them. It will tell you that's not ready. Then you hit process, and it's ready, and it switched the flexibility just like that. 
So those were two huge game changers for me and right away saved me so much time mixing and keeps me in the creative mood as opposed to spending an hour just getting the tracks loaded in the Melodyne. So that just helped uh, a huge amount. And then over here you can see I have all the plugins that I like to use and I just think it's cool that they're here as, as favorites, as pictures, that I can just drag them in to whatever track I want to put on. And the same as Pro Tools, you can edit over here um, on these tracks. So say I wanted on this viola track, I wanted my uh, Fairchild, I just drag, you can just drag it on the track and it comes up on your insert over here and you can do your edits the way you want or add your compression and so forth. So that's huge, it's so easy, right? Um, and so that will, let, let's move on to the mix window and just show you some of the things that I love about the mix. Now, like I said, you can just take the plugin you want, drag it, and it's on the insert right away. Um, the other great thing is, if you're like me, I got a lot of plugins that I've bought over the years. And so, say I need the Fatso on this kick drum, you just click here and you can search for it by just typing, which is a small thing, but I mean, if you've got a ton of plugins and you're scrolling through all these plugins trying to find them, it takes forever and just can lose your vibe. And to me, with mixing, it's all about keeping the creative vibe going and not worrying so much about the plugins and what I'm using and, and, and how I'm going to get there. Um, and so that just makes my life so much easier. The other great thing is, which Logic users have had forever, but it's just the, um, the effects chains. Now, for, say, this vocal track, um, I like to start out with these three plugins usually when I'm mixing vocals. And this sets it right up, ready to go. Just pick the effects chain, and it has the settings I got, just to cut off a little low cut to take out some of the rumble. And then this is kind of where I start doing some compression with this multiband. And then here I, I use my main compressor. Um, and then I'll pick EQs or whatever I need after that, kind of on taste, depending what kind of sound I'm looking for. But it's cool, and you can just click through these just like that. Then, if you have, say, 20 vocals, which I tend to have sometimes, instead of having, you know, you get your basic vocal sound for this, and then say you got a double here. Instead of, in Pro Tools, I have to drag one at a time, which is fine. It's not a big deal. But here, just drag the insert, and it's there. And that's just such a time saver. It just makes all the difference. Um, the next thing that was pretty much the reason I finally just said, all right, I'm switching, was the way you can do sends. Um, you can just click on, say, this reverb, the new Slate reverb, which sounds great. Um, you can take that, and you want to create a send. Now, in Pro Tools, I'd have to say, go Shift Apple New and create a new aux, stereo aux, bus in, bus out, and then send out. And it would just take, you know, a good couple minutes just to get that right. This, just take the reverb, drag it to the send, boom. What it did is it created the send, it created the return, it put the reverb on the return, and now it's already feeding reverb to the send. And the send's already feeding re uh, to the reverb, and it's, it's coming to return. And you can name it, you know, voc verb here and then it will also show up here um, which is huge and uh, you know that just saves you like three minutes and the other thing is is if, if, if you got a huge mix with 20 different returns and 100 tracks scrolling back and forth trying to say I want to change the reverb a little bit on this I'd have to scroll down and pick to find the reverb this is it okay I wanted to make the width a little bigger done now I just have to click on the send and it brings up the reverb, which just, you know, it's these little things that just save so much time and keep you creative, you know, and then I can close it and then open it again and change the attack time and close it. And it's just, it makes such a difference in the world to me. So anyway, those are just some few things that I found so helpful and I've made mixing so much easier and I can just be creative. Um, so, you know, Check it out. If you're looking for something new or you want to try something different, um, check out Studio One. Like I said, this is by no means an advertisement. It's just my passion for audio and just finding things that, that help me stay creative. So anyway, let me know if you got any questions. Give me comments on you know things you like about Studio One or whatever. And uh, if you need your songs Mix and Master, check me out at mixandmasterrestaurant.com. Thanks.